Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. In the last lesson, we took a look at simple lines and shapes, and we discovered different ways of drawing them and different ways of putting them together to build a picture. Today, we're going to look at how patterns of simple shapes can be put together to create more interesting pictures. Today, we're going to be talking about an artist named Paul Clay. Here are some pictures that Paul Clay painted. And here's what I want you to notice about all of these pictures. Notice that they are all built out of basic, simple, geometric shapes. What shapes do you see? Squares? Triangles? Rectangles? Maybe some circles? These paintings also include lots of shapes that are split into smaller ones. Take a look at this square. Notice that it is broken into two triangles. In this painting, the squares, triangles, rectangles, and other shapes all come together to look like something. What is it? What does this look like? It's a castle. In a lot of Paul Clay's paintings, he puts these shapes together to look like buildings, like a village, or a town, or a castle, or something similar to that. The next part of this video is all about gathering ideas. You don't need to follow along yet, just watch and think. So now that we've gotten some inspiration from Paul Clay, we're going to jump right into our paper and do something very similar. So what I'm going to do here is, just like Paul Clay built with shapes, put shapes together to create a picture of something, what I'm going to do is the same kind of concept. So maybe we've all done this before, where we just use a, a square or a rectangle with a triangle on top. And that looks like a house, of course, right? And I can put a chimney on it, and I can use another shape for the door. What shape is that? A rectangle, maybe a dot for a doorknob. I could put squares for the windows. And maybe I'll put lines through the squares to break those into smaller shapes, right? That's how we normally think about drawing a house. But most houses aren't just one section with a roof. Most houses, there's like a garage that sticks off to this side, and then maybe there's two stories, or maybe it's a wider house, like a rectangle instead of a square, or maybe uh, it has like a back section and a front section. Houses are not usually square in shape. They got a lot of different things going on. And especially if we're talking about really fancy houses like mansions or castle type things, this is not going to cut it. So this might work. I could draw a whole bunch of houses like that if I wanted a village. But if I want a castle, I'm going to piece together a whole bunch of shapes just like Paul Clay did. Now it's time to follow along. You can use whatever art supplies you have, but I suggest starting with a pencil in case you make mistakes that need to be erased. So maybe I will start with a rectangle because castles are built out of like stone blocks that are big rectangle stones. And then I'll put a whole bunch of these rectangles together to make a castle wall. Some of them might be bigger, more like squares. Some of them might be shorter, skinnier. They can come in lots of different sizes and styles. Just like if you were actually to look at a real castle, not all the stones are the same size. And while I'm drawing these, I can also start to think about splitting them up into smaller shapes just for funsies. So like I could draw a triangle inside of that square. I could draw a line diagonally through that square which splits it into two triangles. I could draw a line vertically 
through that, which splits that into two smaller rectangles, or horizontally, which splits that one rectangle into two smaller rectangles. There's really no wrong way to do it. Do you see how we keep using the same shape again and again and again and again? It's just rectangle, 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 rectangle. That's called a pattern. When we use patterns in our artwork, it makes them easier to look at and more interesting. But if that's all we did, it would be a little bit boring. That's why we're not stopping with just rectangles. We're also breaking those rectangles up into other shapes. All right, now I have finished most of that front castle wall, but I left this middle section empty here because there's something I wanted to show you. Normally when you think about a castle wall, you think there's like a big gate right at the entryway to the castle. Now here in my picture, I've got um, you know, where that is, I've, I've kind of already filled it in with boxes, and that's okay. I don't need to try to erase it or start over. What I'm going to do is, right at the top of this, make a semicircle. And then I can just split that with some vertical lines. And then any of these other shapes in here, too, I can add some vertical lines. That will kind of help to make this area here feel like it is that gate. We call it a portcullis, that, that thing that raises up and down to close off so that people can get, get in and out or, or not get in and out if you need to defend your castle. And then I'm going to finish up making the front of my castle wall here. And I, I do want to break up some of these big shapes into small shapes. I didn't do much of that over here. I did a bunch over here. Um... Now, you know that up at the top of castle walls, there's that little bit that goes up, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down. That's another pattern. Those are called battlements. And the purpose of those is so that an archer could hide behind it to not be hit by enemy arrows and then reach out and shoot their own bow and then come back to safety behind it. Now to draw that here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw boxes and then leave a gap and then make a box and then leave a gap and then make a box and then leave a gap make a box, leave a gap, make a box, leave a gap, make a box, leave a gap, make a box, and it can hang off the edge if you want. Now that pattern across the top of our castle wall makes it look a lot more like an actual castle. In fact, if I wanted, I could even draw in some people standing on the castle wall defending my castle. If I'm standing up on the castle wall defending the castle, what, what weapon might I use to protect the castle? Probably a bow and arrow. So, how would I draw a bow and arrow? A capital D. That's the bow. And then the arrow would be a line with a point, and the back of it would have some feathers. So if I wanted to draw a whole bunch of archers defending my castle, I could do that. The letter D, a line, a point, and some feathers. Now I just drew stick people here because it's quick and it kind of goes along with the theme of this line drawing. If you wanted to draw more realistic people with faces on there, you could. You could give them hair or helmets. Now, what might be up in the sky? We need to think about this whole page, and we've kind of got this big empty space up here. Up in the sky above our castle, maybe there would be a sun. That's easy to draw, it's just a circle, right? There might be clouds. The way I draw clouds is a straight line for the bottom of the cloud, and then a bumpy, bumpy, bumpy on the top of the cloud. There might be birds. To draw birds, we just draw kind of a widened out curvy V. A what? Well, it's super easy. Just watch this one more time. 
it's like I make the letter V, except I make the top parts of the V curve way out. It's like a letter V, but the top parts of the V curve out. It's almost like a, an M, except that notice the ends of the wings don't come down as far as the middle. So it's almost like writing the letter M, but not quite. I think of it more like the letter V with curvy outs. Anyway, that's all there is to it to make a castle sort of inspired by Paul Clay. Now going back to Paul Clay, look at how he used color in some of these paintings. This one is all reds, and yeah, there's other colors in there too, like green and purple and yellow, but mostly it's different kinds of reds. Notice that Paul Clay's paintings don't necessarily look like real life. This one's all red, but a castle in real life would be more grays and browns because it's made out of rocks and it's dirty. But take a look at these color ideas that Paul Clay came up with and then see what kind of creative coloring you can come up with for your castle. Now here's my finished picture. Notice that I didn't use colors that were realistic. I took inspiration from Paul Clay's boldly colored paintings. You can decide what colors you want to use. Any colors will do. Have fun with it. In this video, we learned how to put together patterns of simple shapes like rectangles to create an awesome castle. In the next lesson, we'll continue using patterns as we draw a beautiful caterpillar. I can't wait to see you then.